So I just want to remind you a little bit about the importance of participating in the class. So even though this is a video, still have your book handy and try to focus on that. Uh, use your notebook, use a pen and just focus on that. And that this is of course important for our classes too. So <clears throat> if you haven't done this already, please make sure you go into Google Classroom. Uh, you can search for that in any search engine. And make sure when you go to the Google Classroom website, you look for uh, how to sign up for a class. If you can look at this slide, you can see the class codes for all the relevant classes. So if you could sign up for that and um, before the next time we meet that would be very useful because you'll be getting lots of um, participation points if you complete those tasks in this website. So this particular slide is up for class 078. Please make sure you check the dates here. There's of course been a lot of changes due to the coronavirus but most of the dates will still be correct especially for midterms, finals and projects. If you have any other questions about the dates, please let me know. This slide is for classes o, class 035. Again, all the information here is about the midterms, the finals, the projects. Some of the dates are, weren't decided because of the problems with the virus, but if we, if you have any questions, please ask me on Kakao or in the classroom or through my email. These dates are for class 048. And if you could send me any requests for information if it's not very clear through this slide. And also, hopefully, the slide will be correct with regards to the dates for the finals projects, the midterms and things like that. This slide is about the information uh, with regards to midterms and finals. So uh, if we haven't done the midterms yet, please look at those uh, this slide and check out the pages of and the units that need to be covered. I've given for the midterms units one, two, three and four and in unit one you can see the vocabulary is on pages seven to nine and the grammar I think is on pages 19 and 20 and um, if we if, uh, for the other um, for the finals we are doing five units five six and seven and you can see all the pages are outlined there for the grammar and the vocabulary Don't forget to log on to the Google Classroom and onto Kakao Open Chat, which you should have by now. If not, please talk to another class member or myself. If any of you are interested in working in England, please message me and uh, I will let you know more about that. There are some schools in England where you can study IELTS and other courses and uh, this particular school is near my hometown so please go there if you want to study English I hope you remember to log on to IQ online all of that information is at the front of the book if you go to the front of your book you can see there are steps to sign on for that and I recommend you do that because some of the work that I'll ask you to do is online. Some of the listening activities are online so I hope that you can do that. And Here are the passwords for each class so if you look over them and then work, uh, log on to that website that's at the front page of the book. This particular slide is um, the link to the project work. I hope that you're coming along with that and make sure you have a team ready to uh, finish that project and all the information is on the table which you can get through the link that link is found on any of the slides that I've sent to you via Kakao Open Chat so you should be able to connect to that and 
um, start to work on that project. So this is the midterm test. It's for role plays, and if you've if we've already done the midterm, then don't worry about this. But if we if we've not if we've not done it yet, please work through that and make sure you have a team and make sure everybody participates in the role play. And um, we'll do that at the appointed time for the midterms. So we're doing the unit 5 today, and unit 5 is on page 100 in the book, and the unit is a, about behavioral science, study of behavior. And the unit question is, what risks are good to take? And many people take risks. And in this um, particular slide, you can see a movie poster the movie's name is Field of Dreams, and there's a link there to the YouTube video. You're welcome to watch any YouTube video clips of the movie. You're also welcome to watch the movie anytime. And it's a 1989 American fantasy drama sports film, and it's about baseball. I know lots of Koreans love baseball, so this movie is about baseball. And in the movie, there's a man called Ray Kinzella, and he lives with his wife and his daughter. In a far on a farm in Iowa in the USA, uh, he had a father who died, and he had a relationship with his father that didn't go well. Anyway, he starts to hear voices on the farm, and the voices say, "If you build it, he will come." So he builds this baseball diamond in his crop field, in his cornfield, and miraculously. A team from the nineteen nine uh, from the year nineteen nineteen called the Black Sox uh, team comes to play in his field. It's a weird and sort of supernatural movie. On the IMDb website, it gets seven point five. It's like a C plus movie, according to the critics there. The IMD website ha IMDB website has lots of information about the storyline and keywords about the movie and uh, it will tell you more about that if you go onto that website. And on the Rotten Tomatoes website it's got 86% from the critics so it's a B plus. And the audiences liked it too, 86% of the audiences gave it a high rating and you can get in that you get the critics comments some people didn't like it some one person says um, kind of very critically despite a lovely cameo turn by Burt Lancaster Field of Dreams is the male weepy at its wussiest so it's not a very nice comment to say about that but it's a film that I recommend you watch so try to watch that film and you can probably find that on YouTube or Netflix somewhere like that so now I want you to do a mind map you can do this by yourself or with teams with your team or with someone else from the class or anyone you like so so the first Thing I want you to think about is have you ever attempted something risky for you now I have done very few risky things I don't like risk but I guess one of the risky things I did was when I was younger I gave up my job to do a gap year and voluntary work and so I didn't have an income for a long time another risk I took I guess was to come to South Korea and that was quite a big risk for me and another risky thing was the zip line uh, which I did in Yongin a few years ago but I don't really like taking risks so if you can just think about some risks that you took and answer that question make and I said make a list of my 
of or my map of risky things you have done or attempted to do okay so actually you can make a list but also if not then what you have heard other people have done okay so think about some risks that you've taken I think right now you're quite young so maybe not a lot of risks but I guess going to university could be a, considered a little bit of a risk because you know it takes four years of your life but then is it worth it of course people say it is worth it because if you have a university certificate you're more likely to get a good job so what risks have you heard other people doing well I've heard lots of things I've heard of lots of people taking risks um, some people obviously do extreme sports and there's lots of those extreme sports out there right um, so I mean if you just look at uh, a list of extreme sports you can see there's base base jumping BMXing actually I used to do BMXing bodyboarding boxing um, bungee jumping I've never done bun bungee jumping I don't want to do that canyoning cave diving and climbing so have you any have you ever done an extreme sport and what other risks I guess there's other risks involving money you know like investing in Bitcoin or investing in uh, stocks and shares or starting a business a small business and hoping it will not fail that's risky that's quite a risky thing so think about things that are risky to you perhaps you have picked up a spider or a snake you know or something like that so spiders are quite scary has anyone here picked up a spider before if you go to page 100 in the book again you can see there's a man in a cave and there's a really big spider oh it's a big tarantula whoa it's hairy and it's got big long legs I've never seen a spider like that have you so on page 100 we're going to uh, start to look at the book part A discuss these questions with your classmates so here we've got three questions and um, these questions are about discussions so you need to do this with your group perhaps on uh, the on the YouTube on the Kakao talk chat room or something um, so let's look at question one what are some risks that people take and why do they take them so we've talked a lot about risks already I think one of the other risks that I didn't mention was traveling to far flung countries or countries far away going to Africa going to South uh, South America going to other parts of Asia Southeast Asia some of these countries can be a little dangerous so it's risky for people to go there so if you think about the uh, risks taken going to a country where there's a war or where there's a lot of disease some people do that right why did why do people go there I think they just want the adventure the feeling the euphoria maybe it's motivated by love maybe by pleasure maybe by the the wish to see something um, now before it disappears because of the environmental issues right so let's look at let's go to question two what kinds of risks are okay to take what kinds of risks are not I think all risks are okay if you like but there are some risks that are dangerous and sometimes pointless risks I think that's what it means what risks are pointless so for example taking drugs might be risky and but it's also stupid and can harm your body and may not be a good idea and why uh, why are why is it wrong to take drugs well if you love yourself then you wouldn't want to do that that's a very stupid thing to do some people think it's 
cool to take risks picking up snakes that are poisonous just for fun or just to prove a point that's a very stupid thing to do do not pick up poisonous snakes why they will kill you okay so what about you what kind of risks are okay to take what kinds are not look at the photo again what kinds of ri what kind of risk is this man taking while well, he's in a cave he's caving and he's approaching this really ugly looking spider I don't know if it's poisonous or dangerous it's just big and hairy would you ever take this kind of risk why or why not would you like to take this this kind of risk and touch this spider and go into this dark cave I don't know anyway answer those questions then go to part B on page 100 questions 1 and 2 what types of risks do the students mention in the listening activity so you'll need your IQ online let's go to page 102 and page 102 look at the questionnaire check your answers then read the answers below to find out if you are a risk taker are you a risk taker so you can see in this table have you ever and then there's eight questions and then there's three chances to say yes I have no but I might or no I never will okay and if you look at the bottom you can rate your answers if you answered mostly yes you like to take many different kinds of risks you may get a thrill by risk take by taking risks life is fast and exciting sometimes the risk will be worth it but you could get into trouble if you answered mostly no you play it safe you are comfortable with risks your idea of a good time is staying home and reading a book the good thing is that you will avoid trouble on the other hand you may not be as successful as some risk takers if your answers were mostly in the middle column or included some of each you are middle of the road you are willing to take some risks but not too many you're careful but willing to put yourself in uncomfortable situations okay so I'm gonna go through this myself number one have you ever moved to a new country yes I have I moved to Korea number two have you ever gone on vacation without a place to stay yes I have <laughs> number three have you ever bought something you couldn't afford mmm probably well my university degree done well, I paid for my university now oh, that sounds wrong that's not what I meant but you paid I uh, borrowed money to go to university so I guess that is something I couldn't afford at the time number four have you ever done something others might think crazy yes many times number five have you ever slept outside without a tent yes I have as a child <laughs> As a teenager, I did that. Crazy. Have you ever stayed up late the night before an exam? Probably. And number seven. Have you ever made a promise that might be difficult to keep? Have you ever made a promise? Yes, I have. And I've failed in that promise many times. Have you read, ridden on the back of a motorcycle? Hmm. I think I have yes maybe I can't re yes I have and I didn't like it So this is about a uh, this is a role play that I want you to do with your groups. Again, you might need to speak to each other on on your Kakao Talk chat room. And 
this I want you to make a role play about three three friends who are talking about risky things they have done or would like to do. You can use real experiences or ones you have heard about. So uh, it's there's a, a list of on the a website called thehealthy.com of the kind of risks everyone should take before they s turn 40. <laughs> Sometimes uh, you should make sure you try to get that promotion. You need to take that risk. Go and take the risk. Go up to the boss and say, promote me, or at least apply for it. Another risk they mention is skydiving. Skydiving is something people do and uh, they take risks doing that. They also talk about risks like forgiving yourself. I don't know. I think obviously when you get older you make lots of mistakes and there's times when you feel like you need to forgive yourself. And then traveling, they talk about traveling locally. I'd like to travel around England. I know it's my country, but there's a lot of things I've never done in England and never been and places I've never been to. Giving a public talk, that would be a nice idea. Um, you can do that at Toastmasters. It's a group where you can give uh, you can give a toast or a speech in front of people. Try for your dream job rather than the safe option yes that's a good idea splurge on something you love that means buying some really cool things take up a new sport or hobby say yes to everything for a whole year wow that would be hard <laughs> selfishly pursue one goal so there's lots of things you can do and that's some of them uh, release toxic people means make sure you don't hang out with people who make you angry uh, speak your truth finally well not too loudly in Korea but speaking the truth to people can help a lot they say take a plan as you go vacation no plans just go fall in love fall in love might be risky especially because sometimes relationships go way bad investigate what you believe yeah, that's a good idea. Like, I believe in the Bible, and I think it's a great idea to find out why you believe what you believe. Why are you an atheist? Why are you a Christian or a Catholic? Why are you an, a Muslim or a Buddhist? Whatever you believe in, try to find out what you believe. Yeah. So, buy a piece of real estate. There's lots of things you could do that are risky. Try them. So this is an interesting game that you can do over the phone actually with each other. You could do it as uh, groups or whatever you want to do. This game is called A Day in the Life of a Risk Taker. So in this game you need to make a schedule for a team member. They then need to guess what they did all day. So we've got here six, six sections of the day. First section is from nine o'clock a.m. then from 11 a.m. then from 1 p.m. then from 3 p.m. then from 5 p.m. and then from 7 p.m. so you fill in the blanks what you need to do is think about three things where are you who are you with and what are you doing so for example maybe 9 a.m. you are with your family around the breakfast table at home eating breakfast okay and then 11 a.m. you are on the subway going to school with a friend okay and 1 p.m. you are in a lecture listening to the professor and taking notes with other students at 3 p.m. you are maybe you could be in the movie theater with your girlfriend or boyfriend watching a movie and eating popcorn um, at 5 p.m. You could be in a singing room, singing BTS songs with your friends from class, drinking soju. And last one, 7 p.m. You could be 
I don't know, what can we say? Eating some gyopsal in a some gyopsal restaurant with your friends talking about the latest sports news. So that's the kind of game you could do with people and it's I think it's quite useful doing that over the phone. It would be quite fun as a way to play this game. People love to take risks. Here's um, somebody scuba diving. Koreans say it's kind of a Konglish thing. Skin scuba. Actually, we say scuba diving. He's got a little camera there. Oh, that's kind of cool. A GoPro maybe. And look at all those fish and the corals and you know everything uh, under the sea it looks really pretty you know but are you willing to do this and often before people take risks they ask themselves some questions what kind of questions do people ask themselves so the first question that would be quite good is what's the worst that could happen if you take this risk so let's choose any risk I'm going to use scuba diving as an example. Well, what's the worst that could happen if you go scuba diving? Well, obviously, the worst that could happen is you get eaten by a... Uh, mm, you get eaten by a terrible shark. That would be awful. Yes, yeah, so that could happen, but I don't think it will. It depends how good your instructor is. So obviously that, are you willing to be attacked by a shark, a great white shark? Then if you say yes, then you can go scuba diving. Okay. Are you true, are you fully committed to taking this risk? Or are you a feel, do you still feel a bit half-hearted about it? If you go in half-hearted, it's not going to work. You've got to be 100% committed to take this risk. You've got to go in there, take this risk and be committed 100%. So you need to ask yourself, are you ready to take it? What, what are you willing to give up to take this risk? Are you willing to give up your money for the equipment? Are you will, willing to give up your time to go in there? You've got to give up some things to take a risk, right? Money or time, usually. Will this change your life for the better if you take this risk? So I think going into the ocean scuba diving will definitely change my life for a bit, for better. I will see life in a completely different way. I will go in there and I'll see all those beautiful fish and I'll think, wow, there's more to life than this, right? And I think it's a wonderful thing to do, I think, going under there. What's stopping you from taking this risk? Well, maybe I'm, I don't have time or I don't have the money or I'd rather do something else first. There's lots of things that could stop us taking risks. So that's one example, but there's obviously many examples of risk taking, including riding motorbikes, going kayaking, and going to another country, all sorts of things you could do. So why don't you uh, think of a risk and answer these questions? So let's do this one more time. I want to think about another risk, okay? So let's say you uh, want to go to a village to help build a new school for this poor village in the middle of the mountains in Africa, okay? So what is the worst that can happen if you take this risk? Well, first of all, there's no airplane to this village, there's no roads, and there are no trains or buses. So you have to walk over the mountains to get to the village. So what's the risk? Well, you could fall off the mountain, you can get injured on the mountain. So it's possible that that could happen. Also, because you're in a mountain, in the mountains, and there is no way to any big hospital, you're also taking a risk if you get sick or hurt yourself it could take you too long to get help from a doctor so then you have to ask the question are you fully committed to taking this risk it really depends on how important you see this place having a school you know that this place needs a school the children need a school they need an education so um, and it really makes you happy when you see this 
village of children have an education so if you're fully committed to that if you really feel pleasure in bringing being there to build a school for these children then I think you're going to try to take this risk if you are the next question what are you willing to give up to take this risk well are you willing to leave the comforts of South Korea the infrastructure of South Korea your home your friends your family all the pleasures that come from living in this country all the conveniences are you willing to let all of that go to take a risk to build this school in the middle of nowhere and that's some people say yes some people have done it so it is something people are willing to do will this change your life for the better if you take this risk I think it would make you a better person it would definitely improve your um, life you will you will see that other people are blessed and it will make you feel happier about it and then it says what's stopping you from taking this risk I think the only thing that stops people from taking a risk is themselves it's their fear you know lots of people are not interested in helping others around the world are they and they give you good reasons why and you can understand that it's very uncomfortable but if you're willing to give up everything for other people then maybe you could do that do this kind of work so now we're going to do the grammar please turn to page 117 and this grammar rule that we're going to be studying is called the past perfect use the past perfect to show the relationship between two events or actions that happened in the past <coughs> use the past perfect to describe the first event or action that happened use the simple past to describe the second event or action so past perfect first event I had driven for five hours simple past I went straight to bed without dinner so that's the second event past perfect first event the match had already started simple past second event we arrived late okay so you show uh, the past perfect shows the relationship between two events right use the past perfect with past time past time clauses that begin with when before by the time and until so past perfect first event he had been at work for hours simple past second event when we called him and you can do that with all of those Paul had driven for an hour before he noticed he had a flat tire they had already eaten dinner by the time I got home I hadn't heard of anything about it until I read the paper this morning. Note that the past perfect is often used with adverbs already, yet, never, ever and just. So let's look at this slide here. The first one, I've, I have, well that's wrong isn't it? Should be I, I, you change that to the past perfect, I'd tried to take risks in the past, okay? So this is actually not a very good um, grammar example, but these are uh, these are past, these are present perfect tense sentences. But uh, you can compare those two. You can change. You can use those verbs and make past perfect tenses out of them. Okay try to make past perfect sentences using the verbs there okay once you have answered them as present perfect try to change them into past perfect so have you ever taken risks before in this short clip you can see someone kayaking have you ever done have you ever done any kayaking before kayaking is really scary I've never done it 
although I did go on a big a big uh, canoe with a lot of people it was kind of fun um, anyway what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna um, do some questions here which you can ask each other uh, the questions are have you ever so the first question here is have you ever ridden a motorcycle without helmet without a helmet I should say I've seen this in Korea a lot I've seen a lot of people ride without helmets in the past maybe these days it's not so common but I don't like that I get scared I wouldn't want to do it myself the next question have you ever dived from a, an Olympic diving board yes I did I actually dived from a, an Olympic diving board it was scary I actually didn't like it and I've never done it again because I hurt myself I landed on my stomach and it was painful have you ever traveled to a foreign country alone I have Korea China Japan many places alone actually not Japan but a lot of countries alone have you ever been to see an active volcano have you ever s um, no I haven't I'm scared of volcanoes because sometimes they explode what about you have you ever been to an active volcano have you ever done NGO work not really but I have volunteered but not NGO would you like to do NGO work working for a non-government organization helping poor people have you ever been snowboarding I've never been snowboarding but I have been skiing and I really enjoyed it but I'm not very good and so I don't recommend that for well no, I recommend it go skiing go snowboarding have you ever drunk too much alcohol have you ever drunk too much alcohol yes I have I got very drunk one day I don't recommend you drink too much try not to drink too much people and the last question have you ever done a bungee jump I haven't how about you actually I don't think I want to I'm kind of afraid what if the rope snaps I don't want to die I know there used to be a bungee jump in in uh, Bundang but I've never I never went there did you here's some more grammar activities I want you to take these sentences and make them into past perfect sentences if you can and try to change them so that they have a simple past sentence as well go to page 117 and he has been he have been to China is a mistake anyway it should be he had been to China okay I have drove a car before I had driven a car before she has smoking cigarettes in the past so make sure you go through them try to correct the grammar there there are obviously lots of mistakes I want you to change them into past perfect tense sentences and then if you can make a simple past sentence at the end using a past time clause that begin with when, before, by the time and until Okay. here's another activity and underline the perfect tense so just underline the present perfect tense and then what I want you to do is take those verbs and make them into past perfect tenses and try to make sentences using those verbs so that you they are in past perfect tense for example the first one says I have been to Italy in the past well take the verb been or to be I had been I had been to Italy in the past I had been to Italy when I realized I left my wallet in the airplane okay so take those past take those present perfect uh, verbs and change them into past perfect verbs 
Okay, so I'm going to try to end now with just talking about three movies and a couple of songs about risk taking. The first movie I want to talk about is a movie called Kong Skull Island. This movie is about an island called Skull Island that has King Kong on it. And uh, there's, um, there's lots of information online about this. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I recommend you watch this film. It's um, got a lot of famous actors in, especially from the Marvel MCU. So Tom Hiddleston, who plays Loki, is in this film. Samuel L. Jackson, who plays Nick Fury, is in this film. And Captain Marvel, Bri Bree Larson, is also in this film. So there's a lot of really famous actors in there. And they go to this island, and of course, there's a great big giant ape called King Kong, who is in a lot of films, really. I like Kong. He's a very great character. So this film on IMDb only got 6.6 .6 out of 10. So it's a kind of D-plus movie, according to IMDb. I think it's a lot better than that. I like it. Um, and But on Rotten Tomatoes, they gave it 75%, a C plus. And, but the audience, only 69% of the audience liked this movie, which I think is a bit surprising, because it is a quite a good film. It is actually quite fun and exciting. And um, the budget, it was quite a lot of money to make. It was 185 million, and the box office was 566 million. So it did make a profit, but not as good as perhaps they expected. The next movie is Fast and Furious 6, which you know is part of the Fast and Furious franchise and has loads of famous actors and is a very awesome, awesome film. It's shortened down to Furious 6. It's like um, quite. I love Fast and Furious. So this one is 2013 action movie. And of course it's got Vin Diesel in it, you know. Vin. Vin Diesel who plays Groot in Galadians of the Galaxy. And... It got 7.1% on IMDB website. So that's like a, a C minus movie from them. On Rotten Tomatoes, it also got a similar score, seventy percent. And but the audience, eighty-four percent of the audience really liked this film. And it's got Dwayne Johnson in it too, who's a really tough, tough guy. Um, I love Dwayne Johnson, so I kind of recommend this film. I think it did really well and in the box office it made 788 million and I like this film I thought it was great and another film we can talk about is Apollo 13 which is a true story I don't know if you've ever seen this movie but it's a really good movie um, with Kevin Bacon and Tom Hanks and it's about this uh, NASA trip that went wrong and they tried to solve this problem um, and it was um, lucky that they survived they could have died but they made it you know it was one of those accidents that really could have you know been disastrous for the people on board and it got a 7.6 out of 10 on IMDB so uh, that's a C plus and on Rotten Tomatoes it got 95% so that's an A plus movie the audience 87% of the audience liked the film I recommend you watch these movies and listen to the songs that I've recommended here including David Bowie's Space Oddity which is about space travel as well so 
if you can watch those and this is the end of the video and hopefully I'll talk to you guys in class.